بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Our lecture today will be about development of the respiratory system Learning objectives By the end of this lecture you will be able to identify the development of the respiratory diverticulum Second, differentiate between the four periods of lung maturation Third, define the most common congenital anomalies of the respiratory system to start with, we have to know of when and how the respiratory system start develop. It begins at the fourth week of development. Look at this embryo. It is just 25 days. This is the mesoderm, which appear red in color, and this is the forecut, which appear yellow color in this area. Now. You can see from the ventral wall of the foregut there is an outer growth and this outer growth from the ventral wall of the foregut is called the respiratory diverticulum. This respiratory diverticulum has an open communication with the foregut. Then after a time it will become separated from the foregut by the formation of esophageal tra tracheal ridge. This esophageal tracheal ridge you can see here, it separates the respiratory diverticulum from the four gut which appear yellow color. And this will become deep in here, form a, a groove, and ultimately there will be formation of a tracheoesophageal septum. This septum will divide the four gut into dorsal portion, oropharynx and esophagus, and ventral portion, trachea and lung buds. The respiratory diverticulum remains in an open connection with the pharynx through the laryngeal orifice. Any defect in this process could lead to esophageal atresia and tracheoesophageal fistula. The tracheoesophageal fistula occurs, it is a birth defect, occurs 1 in 3,000 births. There are five types of tracheoesophageal fistula. The most common type when the proximal end of the esophagus is blind and the distal end have an communication or open or fistula with the trachea. It's about 90% of the types of tracheoesophageal fistula. The second type, the both end, the proximal and the distal end of esophagus are blind ended. It's about 4%. The third type, which is called the H type of tracheoesophageal fistula, the proximal part and the distal part, both of them communication of esophagus or with the trachea here. And this is also 4%. Number D and E, both of them, each one of them 1%, and it is a rare type of tracheoesophageal fistula. The lining epithelium of the larynx, trachea, bronchi, and lungs is derived from the endoderm lining the respiratory diverticulum. Where is the splanching mesoderm, which is surrounding the foregut, will give rise to the cartilage, smooth muscle, and connective tissue of the trachea and lungs. Larynx. The internal lining of the larynx again develop from the endoderm, while the cartilage, the muscle, will develop from the mesenchyme of the fourth and sixth pharyngeal arts. This embryo is five week. You can see here the pharyngeal pouts, the opening of them. And this is the respiratory diverticulum. And here there is the laryngeotracheal orifice. The missing time of the pharyngeal arch start to rub the proliferation. And the laryngeal orifice will change its appearance from a sagittal slip to a T-shaped opening. The mesenchyme of the two arch will start to transform into thyroid cartilage, arytenoid cartilage, and corniculate cartilage. And the laryngeal epithelium also proliferate, and it will result in the uh, closing, temporary closure of the laryngeal orifice. After that, there will be recolonization, and this recolonization produce the laryngeal ventricle, and the mucosal form that bound these uh, resists become the force and the true focal cord. And uh, 
ultimately at 12 weeks you can see that the laryngeal orifice have the adult characteristic adult shape orifice The derivative of the fourth pharyngeal arch is different from the derivative of the sixth pharyngeal arch by innervation. Those which is derived from the fourth, they are supplied by superior laryngeal nerve, while those derived from this is the laryngeal inlet, the characteristic shape of, uh, of it, adult shape like. The trachea, bronchi, and lungs. Uh, during the separation from the foregut, the lung parts form the trachea. This is the, the trachea, and there will be two lateral out, uh, outpoking, which is called the bronchial pod. By the fifth week, each of these buds will enlarge, and they will form the right and left main bronchus. The right and left main bronchus, each one of will be divided. The right one will divide into three secondary bronchi, and the left will divide into two. Later on, there will be formation of uh, ten tertiary bronchi on the right side and eight tertiary bronchi on the left side. This is at five week. You can see that there are uh, two lung buds and they will give uh, two main bronchi. And uh, after that, there will be formation of two secondary bronchi on the left and three on the right. And there will be uh, tertiary bronchi also will be start to be formed. And at the eighth week, there will be formation of three lobes on the right side, right upper, right middle lobe, and right lower lobe. And while there are only two lobes on the left side, left upper lobe, and left lower lobe. By the end of six months, there are 17 generations of subdivisions have been uh, formed. Development of the pleura. As a result of rapid growth of the lung bud, there will be expansion and this uh, lung bud will uh, enter a narrow canal in the pericardio-peritoneal uh, canal called pericardio-peritoneal canal. This pericardio-peritoneal canal, later on, there will be a membrane and this is called pleuro-pericardial fold. And this pleuro-pericardial fold will separate the thoracic cavity into uh, pleural cavity and pericardial cavity. The lung bud will acquire a layer of visceral pleura from splanching mesoderm, while the somatic mesoderm will give the parietal pleura. There will be a space between the visceral pleura and parietal pleura, and this space between the two is called the pleural cavity right the pleural cavity and left the pleural cavity. Now, maturation of the lung. There are four periods and there are corresponding four stages in the uh, maturation of the lung. And each stage have characteristic changes. In the first, the pseudoclandular stage, the lung look like an, a gland. There is only branching has continued up to form terminal bronchiole. There is no respiratory bronchiole. There is no alveoli. So respiration in this stage is not possible. In the second stage, which occurs between 16 to 26 weeks, it is called canalicular stage. In this stage, the terminal bronchiole will divide into two or more respiratory bronchiole. And the respiratory bronchiole, which then divide into three to six alveolar ducts. Fetus, if born at this stage, it can survive if given intensive care. The third stage, it is called the terminal sac stage. Some books, they mention it as type one alveolar stage. It start by the end of the six month up to the mid of the seven month. Here, there will be start appearance of the primitive alveoli for, and it is formed and the capillaries around it will start to establish a close contact with it. Adequate gas exchange can occur and the premature fetus can survive. The last stage is called the alveolar stage. This alveolar stage started at 8 months of gestation and continue to the childhood. Some mention it stay up to the 10 years of life. Here there will be formation of mature alveoli 
and there will be well-developed epithelium and endothelial contact of blood capillaries and the gas exchange can occur freely and there will be across uh, the uh, blood air barrier and they mentioned that in the alveolar stage there will be an increase in the number but there is no increase in the size of alveolar after delivery now look here this is a canalicular period which is between 16 and 26 weeks there are only respiratory bronchioles and these respiratory bronchioles are lined by cuboidal epithelium after that you can see here that the cuboidal epithelium start to change to thin squamous epithelium in the terminal sac period and there will be formation of a primitive alveoli and this primitive alveoli is lined by thin squamous epithelium and this is called now type 1 alveolar epithelial cell and the blood capillaries come in close contact to th this epithelium so respiration become possible last stage which is before birth here the lung there will be formation of type 2 alveolar cell and this type 2 alveolar cell start to secrete surfactant so the lung will become filled with the fluid with nuclear protein and some mucus and the surfactant which is produced by type 2 alveolar epithelial cells what will happen at birth uh, when respiration begins most of this uh, reabsorbed back to the blood by a blood and lymph capillary and a small amount will be expelled by the trachea and the bronchi uh, during delivery abnormalities of the respiratory system the first abnormality is respiratory distress syndrome this is a common abnormality it can cause death or in the premature infant Respiratory distress syndrome results in from insufficient production of the surfactant material by type 2 alveolar cell. When there are uh, deficient in this substance, the uh, inflation of the lung will be difficult at birth and the alveoli will collapse uh, during expiration. Nowadays, there are surfactant materials synthesized and given to those premature babies. Also, they can give them glucocorticoids and these two help uh, the premature baby and the, the mortality rate get decreased second abnormality ectopic lung lobe this ectopic lung lobe is will, will be formed from extra respiratory buds of the uh, four gut number three congenital cyst of the lung this is due to dilatation of terminal or larger bronchi could be single or multiple cystic structure and in this case will give honeycomb appearance of the lung this cystic structure when present in the lung the drainage of the fluid from it will be uh, not the proper so it might result in the chronic infection abnormal division of the bronchial tree in this case there will be abnormal branching of the laryngeal tracheal tube and this might lead to absence of one loop or to formation of an accessory loop on the other side or accessory bronchopulmonary segment another abnormality which is called a neonatal lobar emphysema here there will be over distension of one or more lobes congenital laryngeal whips this is a very rare malformation it consists of a membrane like structure and this will extend across the laryngeal lumen close to the level of alveolar focal cords stenosis and atresia of the trachea again this is a rare uh, malformation a blind ending of the trachea with absence of lung and agenesis of one lung this is due to failure of development of lung but again this is a rare anomaly uh, at the end of the lecture, I want to, uh, to discuss these two points with you and uh, uh, I hope that uh, student might answer two to three lines for every question. For example, the first, a baby born at six months gestation is having trouble breathing. Why? You will find this uh, in your uh, notes uh, in, the, uh, in the table of maturation of the lung. Please answer this question and uh, uh, send it by uh, uh, to the Google class uh, within one week 
thank you very much for your listening and have a nice day